again, everyone, from Tokyo, Japan, and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I'm coming to you on a very beautiful day here at Aoyama Park next to Tokyo National Art Center. Uh, the weather has cooled down over the last few days and it's become much more comfortable to be outside. Uh, though I'm wearing a t-shirt and shorts, I am not sweating at all, which is uh, something I couldn't say a couple of weeks ago when I was making videos out here. It's been just a... we had a, a pretty intense heat wave here for a while. Uh, not as bad as it was last summer when we had temperatures up to 38 degrees in Tokyo, but still not very pleasant. Uh, it wasn't that long ago in my videos when I was complaining about the cool weather and the fact that summer hadn't arrived yet. And then the full heat of summer hits and now I'm complaining that uh, I, I wish the weather were cooler. Uh, I guess uh, I must have some farmer's blood or something from me where I'm never happy with uh, the weather despite no matter what it is. Uh, anyway, uh, it, it's been quite cool for the past few days uh, since the weekend. On the weekend, my wife and I and our daughter decided to go on a long bicycle ride around the Meiji Gyoen Park, which is located about one kilometer from here. Uh, this is a large sports complex. It's the location of the new Olympic Stadium, uh, the Swallows Professional Baseball Team Stadium, uh, a large ice skating rink, as well as a golf driving range, tennis courts, and all that kind of stuff. In the middle of the park is a very large oval street. Uh, for you video game fans who have played Gran Turismo 3, uh, this oval road uh, plays kind of a part uh, in the video game. On Sundays, uh, they close down the park to vehicle traffic and it's open to bicycles only. So it's a great place to come cycling on the weekend where you can ride around and avoid the traffic and not have to you know, stop every 30 seconds or one minute at a traffic light. Uh, if you don't have a bicycle, that's no problem. They have bicycles available uh, to rent for free, or I guess to borrow, I should say, for adults and for children. Uh, they have uh, bicycle safety courses for children as well, so if you have a child, it's a great place to take them to learn how to ride a bicycle. My wife and I and our daughter enjoyed riding around the park for about 30 minutes. Then all of a sudden, the weather turned quite bad, and very heavy rain and uh, lightning and thunder uh, came into the area, so we had to take shelter at the parking garage by the tennis courts until the worst of the rain passed over and then we kind of rode home through uh, the not so heavy rain. Uh, it wasn't so good to have our bicycle ride cut short but on the positive side the rain brought in the cooler weather and cooler weather has kind of remained until now. Uh, the cooler weather will mean the end of the cicadas which you can hear or cicadas as they, some people pronounce it uh, uh, here in Tokyo. Uh, I I won't miss them when they go. Uh, it would be nice to be able to make uh, some videos in a little bit of peace and quiet here at the park. Uh, speaking of videos, let's go ahead and get started on the subject of today's video where I'm going to be comparing uh, the folding medium format cameras to twin lens reflex medium format cameras. Uh, about two years ago, I began selling uh, medium format cameras at my Etsy and eBay stores. And I started with these uh, twin lens reflex cameras. I came across a few of them and uh, I decided to go ahead and clean them up and sell them. And it turned out there was a fair amount of demand for them. And over the last year, the demand seems to have increased to the point that it's a little bit difficult for me to uh, keep them in stock. I listed uh, five of them for sale last week and by today all of them are gone. So I'm on the hunt to get more to uh, clean up and resell. And uh, also, I began selling a few more of these uh, folding cameras and there seems to be a lot of demand for these as well. Uh, medium format photography is a, a great form of photography to get into. Uh, for one thing, uh, medium format cameras are quite plentiful and easy to find. They were pretty much the normal camera uh, for the, the first half of the 20th century. A 120 roll film was quite popular in those days and uh, most consumer cameras and uh, cameras for serious amateurs were medium format cameras. It wasn't until the 1950s that 35mm photography became very popular and uh, the sales of 120 roll film cameras or medium format cameras began to decline. Uh, during this era there were two main types of cameras, uh, the folding type camera and the twin lens reflex camera. Uh, both cameras uh, are similar in that they both use 120 uh, film. They both have similar formats, similar lenses, and similar shutter mechanisms, but the construction of the cameras is quite different. 
So I'm going to be pointing out the differences between the two cameras in this video. And if you're looking uh, to get into medium format cameras or photography and choose an appropriate camera, maybe this video will help you make a choice. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the folding camera. And as you can see, I say folding because the camera the, the folds up like so. Uh, the lens and bellows and shutter and everything tuck inside. And this allows you to carry the camera inside a coat pocket or something like that. And it also allows you to put it in a camera bag and take up only a small amount of space. The camera looks fairly large, but in reality it's not that big. And when I compare it to a, a high quality mirrorless camera or SLR camera, this is of course going to be not only uh, lighter, but more compact. Uh, an advantage to these cameras, medium format uh, cameras and film cameras in general, is the resolution and dynamic range which they offer. Uh, a 35mm camera offers uh, much more resolution and uh, dynamic range than any digital camera could offer you today. And if you're moving up to a larger format, like a 6x6 medium format, uh, it offers far more uh, resolution than any digital system which you, which you can find on the market today, no matter how much you want to spin. It's a, this is a folding camera, and this particular one is a rangefinder camera, and it has an integrated rangefinder viewfinder system. Not all folding cameras are the same. Some are rangefinder cameras, some are scale focus cameras, and some are kind of hybrid cameras. They have a rangefinder focusing system, but it's actually separate from the viewfinder system. So you have to focus using one eyepiece and compose through the other one. And some of these are uncoupled. That means that when you are using uh, the rangefinder system and focusing it, you have to look at the number on the rangefinder and then uh, set your focus tab to the same number. This particular camera has a focus, or excuse me, uh, coupled rangefinder system and it's integrated, which makes it a little bit easier to use. Uh, this camera, like the twin lens reflex camera I have here, has a 75mm f3.5 lens and a mechanical leaf shutter with a maximum speed of 1 300th of a second. Uh, it's, it's quite adequate and for medium format photography, which we tend to shoot with smaller apertures, we don't really need a, a really high shutter speed. Back in the day when these cameras were made, the average uh, ISO speed was about uh, was a ISO 50 or so, and ISO 100 was considered a high-speed film. Uh, today, nowadays, you can get much faster film, uh, but uh, it's not really necessary for these cameras. Operating the camera, this particular one is quite easy. The first thing you have to do is you have to measure the light and set your aperture and shutter speed to whatever the light uh, light value is. You can use a handheld light meter or a smartphone light meter app to get the settings you need to program in the camera. Uh, the next thing you have to do is charge the shutter. And then the last thing you need to do is to focus, uh, compose, and shoot. And once you have shot the camera, then you wind it to the next frame and you are ready to shoot again. The operation of winding the film varies from camera to camera. This particular camera has a mechanical uh, frame counter, so it will automatically stop at the next frame. While other cameras, uh, simpler cameras or earlier cameras, will have a window on the back, and you look through this window while you are winding the film, and you wait for the number of the next frame to line up in the window, and when it's centered in the window, then you're ready to move on to the next shot. The advantage of the uh, folding camera is that when you shoot and uh, compose, you are holding it at eye level. So the perspective that you are uh, getting from the camera is pretty much the same as what you are seeing from your eye because the lens is only a couple of inches lower than your eye. Uh, pretty simple, pretty easy to use, and not very much different from more modern cameras. Moving on to the twin lens reflex camera. It is called a twin lens reflex camera because it has two lenses and the top lens or viewing lens uh, projects onto a mirror which reflects the image shown through the lens up into your eyes. You use, this, you use the, the viewing lens and uh, the reflex mirror, the focusing screen and a magnifying glass to precisely focus and compose on your subject. 
One of the good things about this camera compared to a rangefinder camera is that you can actually see what your uh, image is going to look like when you're looking through the viewfinder. Uh, in the distance behind here, I can see uh, uh, trees and parking lots and hardy barracks where uh, uh, the helicopters land. Fortunately, no helicopters have come yet today. And uh, it's quite good. It, it, it's, it's a very easy to use system. And when you are shooting with one of these cameras, you tend to hold it at chest level or waist level, which gives your photographs a little bit different perspective than if you are shooting at eye level. And it's a more interesting perspective because it's not that common nowadays. Since the 1950s, more or less, we've been using cameras which we focus kind of from the eye level. Uh, when you're focusing kind of from the lower level, uh, I, I think that it gives your, your pictures a more interesting perspective. A lot of people might not like it, for, but for myself, uh, I, I find it very interesting. Uh, the operation of the camera is roughly the same when it comes to making the settings. You have pretty much the same kind of shutter, aperture, and uh, uh, shutter charging system as you find on a folding camera. We have an aperture ring here. We have an, excuse me, a shutter speed ring, aperture ring, and a uh, shutter charging lever. But you have uh, the shutter release lever located on the lower front of the camera. And focusing on most of these cameras is done by turning the knob on the side. Uh, I say most of these cameras because a couple of other cameras, uh, Minolta cameras, will have a focusing tab located on the bottom of the camera. And Ricoh cameras tend to have a couple of uh, uh, knobs located on either side, which you lift up or push down to focus the camera. Uh, and you have a film winding knob on the side rather than on the top. Uh, this particular camera has a mechanical uh, film counter, so it will stop at the next photo and you depress the button to unlock the mechanism to continue winding. Some twin lens reflex cameras, like the earlier uh, folding cameras, will have a window on the back uh, and you must manually count the frames by looking through the window and lining the numbers up. There is one advantage to using the twin lens reflex camera over the folding camera, and that is in cases when you're shooting in crowds. So uh, one thing about these cameras is when you, when you operate them this way, you usually hold the camera at waist level or chest level, and you look down through the top when you are focusing and composing. Another thing which is interesting about these cameras is you can do the opposite. You can hold them up in the air upside down, and you can look upward when you are focusing and composing. And this allows you to easily uh, shoot over the top of other people's heads. A lot of press photographers in the 1940s and 50s preferred twin lens reflex cameras for this reason. If you were shooting uh, one of the big Graflex 4x5 cameras or a 35mm camera, you pretty much just had to hold it over the top of your head and just point it in the direction of your subject and fire the shutter. Whereas with one of these cameras, you could actually focus and, co and compose over the top of other people's heads. Uh, these cameras, uh, as I said, they both shoot in the same format, and it's really hard to recommend one type over another. Each has its own uh, advantages and disadvantages, and uh, a person's choice will depend a lot on their personal preference. Uh, for myself, I like both kinds of cameras. Uh, I, I recently went out shooting with a Super Econta, an old 6x9 camera, and I really loved shooting with those. The good thing about the folding cameras is they offer more of a variety of formats. You can find anything from a 6x45 uh, folding camera all the way up to a 6x9 or even a 6x12. I've seen a few of those uh, out and about. Whereas with uh, the twin lens reflex camera, usually limited to, to the 6x6 format. Some will shoot with in the 6x45 format if you use an adapter. And then there are some which allow you to use 35mm film. And then there are actually a few which uh, shoot uh, 4x4 format the 44 models. Unfortunately, the film is hard to find for these. And then there are even a few which are dedicated uh, 35 millimeter twin lens reflex cameras. Anyway, uh, that's it for my video comparing folding cameras to twin lens reflex cameras. Uh, these cicadas around here, cicadas, however you like to say it, uh, they seem to uh, come and go in the volume. They seem to raise it for a while. They seem to lower it for a while. They tend to raise it when I'm trying to talk about something more uh, complicated or make a point. And they tend to be quiet when I'm trying to think of something to say. Uh, I'm looking forward to these guys eventually going away when the weather gets a little bit cooler. Anyway, 
Uh, that's it for my video. I'll be listing both of these cameras for sale at my Etsy and eBay stores and my new online store, japanvintagecamera.com. So if you're interested in buying one of these or another vintage Japanese camera, uh, please check out my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. I'll be posting more videos about vintage Japanese cameras and photography in Japan. If you want to see these, please subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you tune in again soon.